Charles Dickens is something apart from other writers. He may not be the best one for artists in learning, and he may not be the greatest technical innovator, but he's certainly the best loved novelist in the English language. He was also the first popular writer in the modern sense of the word. He was mostly self-taught, a man of many jobs before he became a famous novelist. He was an acclaimed public figure, uh, and he had an unprecedented direct relation with his readers, which were millions. Make them wait, uh, make them laugh, make them cry. Uh, this was the advice given uh, to Dickens by his fellow novelist and good friend Wilkie Collins. And Dickens did make his readers laugh and cry uh, with stories such as Oliver Twist, Hard Times, David Copperfield, which combine the pathetic with the comic. Through lively portraits of universal characters and an ability to create dialogue unmatched by any other English writer or novelist. And he did make his readers wait too. They would follow his novels from one installment to the next, eagerly waiting for the story to go on. That's because in the Victorian age, uh, novels were usually published by installments in magazines. This meant that the public followed the story from week to week, like a modern TV series. And to increase suspense for the next installment, Dickon would often interrupt a crucial scene at the end of a chapter what today is called a cliffhanger. Dickens was also the first important English writer uh, to present the main social and ethical issues of the age in terms easily understood by his readers, by all readers. He made them think about social injustice, uh, whether it was child exploitation, legal injustice, the fate of orphans, the misery of the poor, the fall into prostitution of many poor women. These were all major themes in his novels. An example is Oliver Twist, uh, which recount the sufferings of an orphan brought up in a workhouse who, who runs away to London and joins a gang of thieves uh, made up of children. In Nicholas Nickleby and Martin Chuzzlewit, uh, Dickens attacks cruelty in boarding schools, the Victorian equivalent of today's bullying. In Hard Times, another of his great novels, he deals with the sufferings of the factory system and the harm brought about by the utilitarian philosophy. And his writing inspired others, in particular journalists and politicians, to address the social problems he described so vividly. Now, there's a reason why Dickens was successful at this. He had first-hand experience of how life could be hard and unfair for the weak and the poor in Victorian society. Uh, when he was 12, to help his family, uh, which was in serious financial difficulties, he was sent to work in a blackened factory near the site of present-day Charing Cross Station in London. The experience proved traumatic, literally. The strong industrial smell, the rats, uh, the rough people he had to work with, were a nightmare for the boy. Shortly after, his father was sent to the Marshall Sea Debtors Prison, and Charles' misery was complete. His family was broken up, and he was sent to live alone in very poor lodgings. Prison, the poor quarters in London, uh, life in the city streets, and the other boys uh, working at the factory remained in Dickens' mind and conscience, and they profoundly influenced his novels. Now, Dickens overcame the traumas of his childhood by dint of hard work and by becoming a successful writer. He was also basically endowed with a great physical energy. The result was an amazing literary output. 14 major novels, short stories, children's and travel books, essays, speeches, together with philanthropic work. After decades of overwork, however, his health was precarious and he died of a stroke suddenly uh, in June 1870. He's still very much alive though. His characters and their sentences have become proverbial. As for a hungry Oliver Twist, can I ask for more, sir? They're so famous that some of them have even acquired a life of their own. Uh, as with Scrooge, the misery old businessman of Dickens' short story a Christmas Carol, who has become one of Walt Disney's best-loved cartoon characters, Uncle Scrooge. Dickens' life and works are forever linked to Victorian England, obviously, but for one year, from 1844 to 1845, he also lived in Italy, a country he liked very much, as shown in his travel book, Pictures from Italy. 
he declared his support for Giuseppe Garibaldi and Giuseppe Mazzini, helping raise funds for their campaigns and stating that, I'm quoting, I feel for Italy almost as if I were an Italian born. All in all, he was a generous man as well as a great novelist. One of his sentences uh, best sums Dickens up uh, as a man and a writer. I hope that real love and truth are stronger in the end than any evil or misfortune in the world.